Hello, I'm Jakub Bartoszewicz. Welcome to the presentation of our poster on real-time pathogenicity prediction during sequencing of novel viruses and bacteria. When a novel pathogen emerges, targeted diagnostic assays are not available at first. But fortunately, there is also an open view perspective, which allows you to analyze a whole sample with only minimal assumptions about its content. This, in turn, enables you to find novel biological threats, which are a high concern, admittedly, now more than ever. This is because natural pathogens evolve very quickly and engineering of known agents for malicious purposes becomes increasingly realistic. The gold standard for open view detection is DNA or RNA sequencing, followed by computation analysis. This is usually done by mapping the sequencing reads to known pathogen and non-pathogen reference genomes using advanced sequence alignment algorithms. However, since new pathogens are expected to be quite divergent from the known ones, reads originating from them will likely not have any clear matches and the pathogen will not be detected at all. To solve this, we need a second step of the pipeline where a target phenotype, for example, a bacterium being a pathogen or a virus infecting humans, can be predicted directly from isolated NGS reads or read pairs. More specifically, we can train a machine learning classifier based on known genomes, and then we test it on a held out set of bacterial species or viruses unseen in training. The classifier can then be used to filter out non-pathogen reads and to select the reads originating from pathogens for downstream analysis. We do support any Keras model, but we find that a version of a resonant that is invariant to DNA reverse complementarity works better than other architectures that we tested. To train the model, we modify some previously compiled datasets. The problem is they contain relatively long full reads. And this is a setup that is not compatible with real-time analysis, with analysis of incomplete data as it's produced by the sequencer. Therefore, we have to modify the datasets by randomly shortening reads to better model our task. Our approach works well for both novel bacteria and viruses, outperforming the alternatives based on both machine learning and sequence homology detection. To our surprise for viruses, the resin performs even better with mapping, even on the reads that can be successfully mapped to their closest reference genomes. This holds also for real sequencing data from the SARS-CoV-2 sequencing run, which models the pre-pandemic state of knowledge by not including the SARS-CoV-2 reference genome in the training database. After only 50 cycles, which corresponds to reads of only 50 BP, we achieve an 80-fold increase in sensitivity compared to the standard mapping approach. Detected reads can be then reanalyzed, for example, with BLAS, to find their closest taxonomic matches, which may include non pathogens in this case. We also extend the approach to nanopore data, where we use only the first 250 BP of nanopore reads, which corresponds roughly to half a second of sequencing time. We can see that even in this extreme scenario, we outperform mapping by a wide margin, even though the mapper has access to full length reads of 8 KB on average. Again, this holds also for real data, where we are happy to see a five fold increase in performance, even compared to mapping full length reads. To sum up, we predict if Illumina or nanopore sequencing reads originate from novel bacterial or viral pathogens. The same methodology can also be reused to screen synthetic oligonucleotides for potential threats. And what is more, the real-time detection could be used for selective sequencing, ejecting non-pathogen reads early and focusing on sequencing the pathogens. The pipeline can be installed with Viaconda or with Oka, and the published version of the paper should be available shortly. 
Finally, I'd like to thank all the people and institutions mentioned here and you for your attention. If you have any questions, come by to chat or drop us an email.